if you did not know, most republics are highly corrupt. And I'm not speaking about how republics plundered personal generational wealth of various royal and noble families or citizens who had means. No, 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 no. We will see today that modern republics are basically money-making machines for select few. The few who are selling the dream that one day you too can be elected and be as corrupt and rich. When you, the people, think of corruption, authoritarian government and rich criminals with bags of money often come to mind. Some bold Russian-speaking guy Vlad with gold chain and mega yacht in France and small disclaimer, we have seen recently examples of Western politicians being caught with literal bags of money. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Remember, the more you click the like button on this channel, the more monarchism we can bring back to the world together. The Corruption Perception Index from Gloriously Independent Transparency International suggests that people believe there's more corruption in authoritarian nations than in places like Europe and the United States. These kind of benchmarks are used by politicians to point fingers at other nations even when they are faced with accusations of not preventing corruption when they had a chance. Like for example, Chancellor Schulz of German Federal Republic. Well, fellow monarchy friends, to the average Republican, this is fantastic. Western republics work, and the Eastern republics have something to aspire to. They just need to wait for that one bearded Republican messiah to be born and establish Republic of Heaven in the East as well. And all will be fine, no corruption. Until then, they will just keep saying that the republic they have at the moment is not a real republic. Exactly the thing communists say about communism. And by looking at this map, there is no corruption in the wealthy countries. Big government and large taxes do work, or do they? Experts categorize corruption as either grand, which is high-level corruption, or petty, like bribing a local official. When you go to a doctor in Hamburg, you don't need to bring a bottle of vodka to be seen, unlike in places like, for example, Chelyabinsk in Russian Federation. Countries like Federal Republic of Germany, French Fifth Republic, or even the United States of America cannot be corrupt. Or can they? When it comes to big money, whoa, oh boy. Wealthy republics like Germany deal with a significant grand corruption. But unlike our friend Vlad from a poor republic, who had to take AK-47 to secure his new yacht, Politicians in these other republics are much more in the grey area. And the best thing is, when they are accused of corruption, they plead not guilty and say that they followed the rules completely. It just happened that a huge pile of cash ended up in their name in Panama. Good things happen to good people. It's just that it's never been your turn. Let's take example of two German parliamentarians who helped arrange contracts for sale of masks during the pandemic and received kickbacks in hundreds of thousands of euros. Just like with any party workers, they have been harshly tried by their party. And as a consequence, they had to, wait for it, resign and return their party membership cards. I guess they were so devastated. But they were not found guilty, and it seems that the whole thing was legal. So let's take a break and recap. Giving vodka to doctor to get examined is corruption. That guy Vlad stealing from the pension fund is fraud and corruption. But some guy Hans from Germany receiving 200,000 euros in kickbacks, all good. Just a slap on the wrist from your drinking buddies from the party club. Wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, who wouldn't want to be a president or public servant in Republic? Write down in comments what do you think. Isn't this the perfect get-rich-quick scheme for proletariat? But, wait, there is more. Why stop only at kickbacks? 
when 40 to 50 percent of the voters go to polls and your party gets 51 percent of that vote that puts you as a parliamentarian in unique position small fractions of citizens just gave your group 100 percent of power to make all decisions so suddenly you alone as individual parliamentarian are holder of a lot of power for next four years you might become member of parliament commission for this and that you will be asked for opinion by journalists and what is your opinion the answer is often it depends on who pays more Remember Qatar Gate scandal a couple of months back when police found bags of Qatari money in possession of EU Parliament Vice President, who is, by the way, back at work. Or the similar case in Germany with Azerbaijan money for lobbying. You know how they say there is honor between thieves. Is there some honor and understanding between international Republican leaders and politicians? Well, dear friends, did you ask yourself how did Vlad from the beginning of the story manage to purchase yachts and villas with obviously stolen money? Well, the answer is simple, by getting help from corrupt system to hide illegal profits. The politicians provide avenues for the corrupt to hide ill-gotten wealth. Germany's financial market is an example where it's hard to trace assets ownership. And talking about the dirty word, money. There is one another aspect. Why is it magnificent to be politician in post-monarchy world? Back in the day, for millennia basically, monarch had to have a hill. And if this hill showed promise of gold or silver, he had to invest huge sums of personal money to bring specialists and then open a mine. Then invest some more money to be able to convert this ore into coins and only then monarch had more coins to issue out how is this thing done today do you remember mr karl marx the guy who wrote a capital but was never able to make some yes that guy marx loved many things and most of them never belonged to him one of them was national banks and he wanted centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. He wanted central banks to be everywhere. And he wanted more. He wanted to cut ties with commodity money. On 15th of August 1971, Marx's vision became true. The US administration single-handedly terminated the redeemability of the US dollar into physical gold. And so gold, the currency of the civilized world, was officially demonetized. The fiat money system, the creation of money through circulation credit expansion, has brought about a new kind of debt slavery on a grand scale. By issuing fiat currencies, created out of thin air, a rather small clique of central bankers together with their staffers cause a revaluation of values. Chronic monetary inflation, for instance, discourages you from saving, cultivating the running into ever greater amounts of debt. Glorious invention, wouldn't you agree? And as it has been proven in Weimar Republic and Soviet Union, the closer you and your friends are to the money printing machine, the more you have. The further away you are, the less you have. And while in monarchies of old you had to pay 10% of tax, Today, your dollar or euro is being taxed multiple times in multiple ways. And if you're about to put your hard-earned cash into mattress, it will lose purchasing power. Is this the case only in republics? What about monarchies? Well, times of old are all gone. All countries now have central banks governed and run by politicians. Politicians are working in this way everywhere. But at least in monarchies, monarch occasionally refuses to sign a law, forcing politicians to explain themselves. Which is at least something in a world where politicians took many powers away from monarchs and the people. Our recent surveys show that support for monarchies increase in every country when monarchs have executive powers. 
something that monarchs don't usually have. So what would happen if our monarchs had more executive powers? And I'm not talking here and advocating for absolute monarchy, just some executive powers. Let's start by rewinding to the beginning. Let's only look at the things done in organized fashion. It was Republicans that stole all personal generational wealth of many families, because Marx said so, right? It was Republicans who persecuted and killed anybody who had anything, whether it was Venezuela, Cuba, Poland, Russia, Korea, Germany, and many others. Again, because some guy with beard said so. And it was them who demonetized our money, turning us into continuously taxed slaves of debt and credit scores. So what if it took a step back? We would need to call things with their correct names. We would need to say that Marxism brought evil around the world, and it still does this. So let's say we ban Marxism and everything he advocated in his book Capital. What if we monetize our money again? And finally, to have a non-partisan person, a monarch, to control politicians. And that is just one of many ideas. Who knows, maybe Marxism actually does work, and it will only take a little bit of time. I don't know, but ladies and gentlemen, the floor is yours. Share your thoughts, hit that like button, and let's fuel the conversation for a better future. Special thanks to our patrons who help us produce our videos. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.